This is my uh, 4x8 utility trailer. Uh, the thing's split in two on me. Uh, this week I was hauling a load of wood chips. Um, I've already uh, removed the sides. Um, this came just the way you see it pretty much. Um, and had fenders attached to it of course. Uh, they're all rusted off already. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to salvage this piece of diamond plate that's on this trailer. The new ones, um, I bought this one for about $400 from Fleet and Farm 20 some years ago. The new ones, um, they have the diamond or uh, the expanded metal uh, floor and I don't know how you would haul dirt or wood chips or anything in them. So I'm trying to salvage this piece of diamond plate. You know, uh, once I get the frame made, I can weld this piece of diamond plate back on the new frame. Um, so I'm basically removing the diamond plate, removing the axles, and everything else is going to get scrapped out. So this is what broke. This is all rotted away here. It's all rusted. So all the welds were everywhere it was welded, it broke off. The only place that was holding it on was that corner right there. So the trailer just started fishtailing all over the road on me. Um, luckily I was only going 15 miles an hour or so up a hill so I was able to pull over quick and uh, I was able to winch it together with my straps and get it the rest of the way home. I was about uh, maybe a half mile from home when it happened so I got lucky but uh, we're going to cut this off here and then we're going to flip this thing over. We're just going to take the grinding wheel and cut this off. <laughs> hitch all right so I can't flip it the way it is so I'm gonna cut the axles off make it a little lighter it would be easier to flip over are cut off. Hopefully I can just slide this top off there. off on the bottom side now. Alright, she's ready to break through. Hopefully it just falls on the floor.
I saved the diamond plate. All right, so our next step here is uh, we're going to clean this all up here on the bottom side of this uh, diamond plate. And uh, I got the material through work to make the new frame. It's a uh, two by two square, eighth inch wall tubing. Um, I tried ordering online myself and having it delivered to the house here. It was over $400 for, to have it sent here to my house. I ordered it through work, it was only $140 through work. Talk about price gouging, eh? <laughs> but uh, anyhow, we're gonna get this ground up and then we're gonna use this diamond plate as our pattern to lay out the, uh, the angle iron for the, uh, the tubing. And uh, we're gonna start tacking it all together. regular grinder wheel and and I got all the welds the old welds off the bottom of this plate okay so now what I'm going to do next is I need to get this rust off of here so I'm using one of these I call them a flapper wheel I don't know the technical name for them but you can buy them at any hardware store it's like a sanding disc okay so I'm taking I'm doing the whole bottom of this plate I'm trying to get all that rust off of there and you don't have to get it perfectly clean but you have to get the chunky rust off and then I'm going to spray it with some uh, Rust-Oleum product that bonds with that rust and, and it'll turn this whole thing black again and then you can paint over it. Um, so let's, let's do a close up over here. Um, I left the area here where there's some heavy rust yet and you can see what I'm doing. I hope you can see this. Um, so you have all this bubbly rust, okay, and you have to get the bubbly rust off and get it to more of a smoother, uh, you don't have to get it down to bare metal, but you got to get it, you got to get it down to a smooth, uh, Once you grind them bubbles away, you're left with these pits, and that's that's rust. That's what rust does. It eats away at the metal. So you have these pits. So we're just gonna wipe that off a little bit. I'm gonna spray some of this stuff on there and you'll see what it does. Uh, spray it on good and wet get the thing really soaking wet and uh, so it ha can soak in to the, the little bit of rust that's left there actually I uh, misspoke before this is Permatex uh, I believe Rust-Oleum makes a similar product um, I've had this around here for quite a while uh, so but this stuff works works pretty darn good so we'll let this sit for about an hour and we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. So hopefully you can see this. Um, where I sprayed, anywhere there's rust, it turns black. And that's, that's the uh, product bonding with the rust and it makes a chemical reaction, it turns black. Now I'm gonna spray this whole thing and then once it's dry, I'm gonna look it over and anywhere where I still have a bubble, or what I feel is a bubble of rust, I'll go back and I'll just regrind them areas and then we'll spray it one more time. And uh, this should, this will help keep this thing from rusting any further. And uh, once you put a good coat of rust oleum paint or something on it, I mean, it, it'll be, it'll last another 20 years. 
and uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Because in 20 years, I won't probably won't be around. I'm going to be 60 this year, so um, if I can get another 20 years out of this trailer, I'm good. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna spray the rest of this uh, thing, and I'll show you it when it's done. Okay, so here it is. I uh, put two coats on it yesterday, and it's all dry now. And uh, basically, it it turns it black. Um, it goes on clear, and then it dries. It turns it black. It makes a chemical reaction with the rust, and uh, and you can see. There are some really dark spots. The really dark spots is where I was down to bare metal, where I ground away a weld or something. And uh, there's still a few spots of rust here. Um, maybe I'll go over it later again, do a wire, another wire brush and put another coat on um, after I got some, some of the welding done and uh, see what it looks like. But for the most part, it, it holds back this rust and it, it'll keep this from rusting for quite a few years. So let's take a little closer look at this area here. So here are the dark spots I'm talking about. That's where I ground down the bare metal. It really turns black. I mean, here is where there was a lot of rust. You can see it's still kind of brown. I, and I could maybe go over that area again and wire brush it and, uh, and uh, clean it up some more. But uh, you can tell that it's bonded I know my, my lighting is very bad out here in the garage, but uh, you can see the see that it's bonded. And uh, I think once you put a good coat of some type of paint on there, I think it'll it'll last quite a while. It, it's I think it's I think it did what it's supposed to do. So so we're gonna start uh, we're gonna start welding this frame on here, and uh, let's see how far we get. All right. So I'm, I'm using this plate as my guide or a table, whatever, um, to try and line this, this uh, tube up. I have my big square here, I have a few clamps. So I'm starting out, I got this first corner pretty square. Now these tubes are not that square. So when you lay them down, they kind of roll. So I got some shims under here and whatever to try and try and get it as straight as possible for these first couple corners. And then once I got the, the square made, you know, the rest of it, it's gonna be what it is. You know, I mean, I'll just, uh, I have the pieces cut, but if they don't quite fit, I'll go, go re-cut them a little bit. And uh, so let's, uh, let's tack this first piece together here. All right, we got that first one tacked in. We're gonna go around and uh, do the other four corners. So, we got this all welded up here on top. This is actually the top. So we're gonna flip this over and uh, put it down against this uh, plate and then clamp it and everything and start start tap welding it into this plate. Um, first, we gotta grind off a little bit here on these welds. Um, so we'll do that. And I got it hooked up to my little winch here. We're gonna lift that up and flip it over and uh, start tacking it down, weld the bottom. And uh, we're, uh, we're moving along pretty good here. So we got all of that base ground off so it'll sit flat on this plate. So before I flip it completely over, I want to weld the insides of these, these tubes here on the corners, the inside corners. It's uh, much easier to, to weld laying flat like this than to try and, you know, do a vertical or whatever. So as long as I got the hoist here, you know, I'm going to do it like this, make it, make it easier on myself. You know, every time I look at the camera, I see how bad the lighting is, and I, I just I have to apologize for the lighting. I don't have much for lights out here in the garage, so um, so anyhow, we got this, we got the top side welded up, ground all the welds back, flipped it up, we welded inside the corners. Now we flipped it down, we welded the top, actually the bottom. Okay, so the the frame is welded solid. So the next step here is I gotta put, I gotta get this diamond plate welded back to this frame. So that's what all these clamps are for here. So I have this whole one side clamped, and then I'm gonna work across each member 
before I do the other side over there in case there's a little you know warp in the plate or whatever hopefully I can get as flat as possible you know so um, it also brought back in the hitch we're gonna try and reuse the hitch that's a good piece of metal yet um, I'll probably redo the redo the coupler on the end that's getting pretty pretty ratty looking but uh, I think if I just clean this piece up and uh, you know rust rust proof it and whatever and get it welded back on here and I'm gonna make it solid this time it's not gonna be a tilt the old trailer was a tilt I'm not gonna tilt I'm gonna try and make a ramp for the back so um, so that's about it and then I made the uh, I made the uh, the uh, oh what are these things called the links the links for the uh, spring okay so I purchased these the other ones are pretty rusted so I purchased these and then I made a, uh, a set of blocks here and I'm gonna weld one block to the, to the frame and then the other block is welded to the uh, to the bracket here that the spring goes on okay so then so then I can take the springs back off the axles back off and then take this and flip this over and it won't be so heavy and then bolt, bolt them back on and then maybe I'll just do a tack weld on the ends or something you know just to make it a little bit kind of permanent you know but uh, this is basically I did this for assembly so I can I can work on this here with my little crane and lift this up and flip it around because once I put them axles on there it's all one-sided heavy that I can't it's terrible trying to flip it over so um, I think, I think this will work, you know? So, so I got one for the front and then the back one is a shorter one. And uh, before I took that trailer apart, I measured all of this. I measured the, where this these brackets are. And the old trailer the wheels were too far forward okay if you had a load in there and it wasn't front heavy I mean really front heavy that trailer swayed all over the place so I'm gonna move these springs back and I'm moving them two inches and I'm thinking that's gonna make a huge difference on the weight of the trailer so that when it's loaded up you know you're, you're front heavy you're on your tongue and uh, it won't sway as bad um, it really showed up when I was hauling like wood stuff like that where you just kind of throw the wood in there and it's it's not you're not really stacking it decent or anything and uh, boy that thing would just sway all over the place we'd have to get out and you know take the tarp off and throw throw a whole bunch of wood up to the front and get more weight on the front and then you know it, it was kind of a pain so hopefully this moving this two inches back is going to give me enough a little more offset that I'm going to have uh, weight on the tongue and not in the back of the trailer so that's about it. I'm gonna start welding here again and get this all tacked in and everything and, uh, and uh, we'll get back to it once we start putting the axles on. All right, so I got, I got the plate welded to the frame. There's no turning back now. It's, it's solid. Uh, you're not gonna change it now unless you wanna cut it all apart again. But anyhow, I got, uh, these brackets welded on for the axles and I also made up some sides um, I cut them while I was cutting everything else I had some extra tube so I'm putting four on each side uh, somewhat evenly spaced and uh, the fender will be in here in the middle somewhere not quite sure where that's gonna end up yet but uh, so right now I'm gonna lift it up off of these horses and I'm gonna set it on the ground and stand it up on end so I can do a better job of welding these sides on and uh, it looks pretty straight right now so you know we'll see we'll we'll see what it looks like when I flip it up right, here we go.
Okay. I clamped it to them sawhorses. Just in case something lets loose here, it'll give me a second to get out of the way or something. But, um, we got balled up all of these here now on this side, and we'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so these are all welded up, welded solid. Um, so now we're going to lay it back down and flip it over the other way and do the other side, get these on. And, uh, and then, then I think we're ready to flip it straight side up and put the wheels on. on this side so we got these we got these other ones welded on here um, when I was doing that I realized I forgot one very important step I forgot to put the hitch back on the front so uh, we're gonna have to flip it back down and uh, put that hitch on and then I thought well as long as I'm doing that why don't I put a couple coats of paint on the bottom right away and then, uh, then when I flip it over for the final time it's I'm done with that side of it I can put it on the wheels and it's it's good to go and then I just gotta paint the top so uh, I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get the hitch on then put a couple coats of paint on so uh, I guess we'll be back tomorrow or the next day I got uh, two coats of paint on here now on the bottom and uh, I used uh, rust-oleum you know professional grade whatever whatever you know it's uh, rust-oleum paint. Stuff goes on pretty thick. So two coats, I think that'll be fine. Uh, and then uh, when I flip it over and I do the sides here, I'll re-hit the sides and stuff. But uh, I think two coats on the bottom will be good. So, uh, so we're gonna flip this over and get the wheels on. I'm waiting for fenders. Um, I ordered some fenders, some new fenders from uh, Amazon, they're weld on, so I'm gonna be welding them on here somewhere. But uh, I can do that all from the top once the wheels are on. And uh, so we're gonna get this flipped over and uh, finish welding the top side and get it all ready to go. When the fenders come, we'll just tack the fenders on and we should be good to go. So I got it flipped over and uh, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just stitch weld around this plate on the top side now you know like the corners and maybe three or four down the side it really doesn't need it because it's held on from the bottom but uh just a couple around the sides and you know on the ends and the corners and uh then uh gonna wire brush this top so that's ready for paint and uh get the wheels on okay guys it's all done wheels are on I didn't bore you with the details there, putting them together. My one, uh, my one bracket had a little twist to it, and I saw that when I welded it, but I didn't think it would be that much of an issue. But uh, yeah, I had to kind of pry that leaf spring in the place a little bit there, and trying to pry and get the bolt in at the same time is a little hard doing it by yourself. So I had to hook up some ratchet straps and everything else to get it pulled one way or the other to get that uh, that bolt to line up, but. Uh, it's in, it's all together. Um, everything's new except for the axle and bearings and uh, I always took good care of the bearings so I don't see an issue with them. But, uh, so we're waiting for the fenders. I bought the, the little square ones that just kind of go over the top and they'll just get welded in the frame. And uh, once those come, we'll get them welded on. Everything's, everything's stitch welded on here. So that plate ain't going nowhere. And uh, 
and then we got to get the sides on and stuff and and she'll be ready to go ready to go down the highway again you can take it down the highway right now uh, got the coupler on on the end there so uh, we're good to go we'll get some pictures and stuff when it's all put together um, the side the side kit is uh, same side kit that I've always had on here uh, I'm gonna try and put it right back on the way it was so uh, hopefully that works I'll just screw it into these these things I put on here so that's it for now we'll come back to this once we got uh, got the fenders in it all right so it's been a week or so um, Fenders came. I, I couldn't get them. Usually I go to our local fleet farm and they have these on the shelf. But for some reason they only had one on the shelf. So I came home, I ordered them from Amazon. So they're here. Um, this is just a, I forget what this was, 20 bucks, you know, for this fender. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it here. We're gonna, we're gonna attach it to this, this plastic siding that I have. This is the old, side kit and uh and we're just gonna do we're gonna do a couple of tack welds or stitch welds down here onto the frame and that should make it solid um and then a couple of screws that's the way i had the other one attached a couple of screws through here um obviously the screws aren't going to line up to the same holes but whatever you you won't see that what's going down the highway i had to make some they had to make some changes here too to the so they fit these new tubes. But uh, that should work. So that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna kind of lift this up a little bit, um, tack weld that on there, and then put some put some screws through here. And uh, that should be it. We'll show it to you when it's done. All right. So all I'm doing is I'm just running a bead right here on that on that channel and on the fender. Let me give you a little closer look at that once. So right there, just running one bead down there that makes this real rigid. And then I'm putting, you know, four bolts on the inside here. And, uh, and this is, uh, this is made out of that, uh, basically that decking plastic. This would be like a fascia board. And I put two of them together. That's why you see the, the seam right there. Okay. So there's two of them together. And, uh, and it's, it's pretty durable stuff. I mean, I've been hauling wood chips and, and dirt in this trailer for quite a few years. And it's still in pretty good shape. So, uh, so I'm reusing it. I'll just plug some of these holes with... Uh, with some caulking and stuff and so it doesn't get water going in there all the time when we're hauling stuff and uh, we're good to go put the wheel back on set her down and uh, well let's see what else we got oh we got to do the front panel I got to do some welding there so I'll show you that when I get that done and, uh, and then it's on to the tailgate all right so I added a piece on the front here and that's that's gonna let the panel sit behind it here and then get it's just gonna get bolted through um, I never took the front panel off I had it on the last my last setup I had it where the panel was removable but we never took the panel off so I'm just gonna make it a solid panel this time and just bolt it through and uh, and that should work here on the front so let's go around to the back So on the back, I had to add a panel, this piece right here, okay? I had to add that because my my sides were a little short because of the way I made this new frame. So they came up a little short there. Um, so I had to add that so I had something to screw into. And then I put the hinges on the bottom here for the gate that I'm gonna make, the ramp. Okay, so those are welded on. And uh, the other two pieces, the other pieces will be on the ramp and then, um, and then it should flip up. So I'll probably have to add some kind of a latching mechanism here yet. But uh, right now it's going out and getting painted. So, all right.
see you in a couple days. Right, we're back. Um, we moved everything into the basement here because it's so hot outside. I figured for this tailgate, you know, we can uh, we can do this down here, and I can carry it up the steps and uh, just attach it. So uh, we put the hinges on up here. Um, and then the rest of this is just this. What I did is I went and measured what I what we have at Amberg Acres. We have a, a four wheeler. We have like three lawnmowers. So I took the smallest dimension of the lawnmower and then the four wheeler to the outside of the four wheeler, and that's where I came up with the width of this track here. Um, so all of this angle iron I got for nothing. This inch and a half was up in a garage up north. Don't know where it came from, but it was there, so now it got used. Um, this one inch I got from my Uncle Joe, he had a bunch laying around. Thank you, Uncle Joe. And, uh, and then this, uh, these strips. So these strips are gonna get welded on here for the track, okay? And there'll be a gap between them. And uh, that'll let the air go through as you're driving so it's not a, a wind sail. And uh, these, these I got from my daughter and her husband. They had an old deck attached to their garage and uh, it was made out of a metal frame. And uh, they were tearing apart and I said, you know, can I have those frames? And next thing you know, they were on my snowmobile trailer and we were all them home. So that's where all of this stuff came from. None of it, I didn't pay for any of it. So it's all being made out of bits and pieces. So there'll be, Two, two main tracks where you drive the tractors up. And then this center center part here will be for like a dolly or whatever. I'm gonna put some pieces there too to make like a track for a dolly to go up. And uh, and that should be it. It should be let the air through and it won't be a sail. And um, I, think it'll, I think it'll turn out pretty good. So right now I'm cutting everything. Cutting all these pieces out of 45. Okay, um, so I can weld them in there real nice, and it'll look nice and everything. So we'll get back to it. We gotta finish cutting these. We gotta weld this all together, and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Well, here it is. It's all welded up. Um, I added some of these pieces of this plastic on here. This is like a ramp for uh, for a dolly cart, and then this will help hold in dirt or whatever, it'll be like the tailgate, you know, it'll help hold in the dirt. Um, but uh, these ramps turned out pretty good. I mean, not the best welding I did, this stuff was really rusty. Um, if you ever welded steel with rust on it, it's, you know, you hit a pocket of rust and it, it just blows up your weld, so. Uh, but there's plenty of weld on here, so it ain't going anywhere. So uh, anyhow, the next next big thing is uh, how do I get it out of here now? Um, kind of brings back memories of the uh, the boat I built uh, how many years ago for my uh, my grandson and myself to go fishing in. We uh, we built the boat down here and we couldn't get it out up the steps. Uh, my buddy and I were trying to get it up there and. Uh, the thing was bottom heavy, so it kept flipping on us, and we couldn't couldn't hold it and get it up the steps at the same time. So we, we ended up going up and putting a big eye bolt in the family room ceiling up there, and ran a cable down the steps into the basement, and we pushed it up on this cable, and that's how that's how we got the boat out of the basement. And uh, then my other project I uh, I had an issue with was my uh, my homemade golf cart. Um, and I measured that. I made sure that should have went up the steps no problem and we could not get that thing up the steps. Um, so I ended up cutting that in half to, to get that up the steps. Um, but I think, I think this will go up the steps. Um, I have 48 inches there and this measures 51 but I should be able to tip this at an angle and that should give me the extra couple inches to get it up the steps. So, shouldn't be an issue, but we'll see. So, 
Next thing is uh, paint. Get it painted. I gotta make a few pins, um, but I can do that after it's painted. I can set it up against the trailer and make the pins, and uh, that should be it. We'll uh, we'll get her painted and we'll get back to you. Well, there it is, folks. All finished. Put some lights on the back. It in place. See the hinges underneath there. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel.